first off, let's do a quick check of the data model to, ma to make sure we understand what we're looking at here. So first of all, if we have a look at the model here, you've got our, our transaction table. So every single sale we've made, and then we've got some dates, customer data, products data, regional data. So we're going to do most of our calculations over the sales data table. So we've got things like the total revenue column. And if we wanted to know what total sales were, we would just have to sum up that column. So we've already got that pre-sorted here. So I'm just going to drag in total sales to the canvas. And then we're going to see here that we're going to get total sales for every single uh, for in, in the entire time frame of our, our data set because we haven't filtered it yet. But then I'm going to filter it by my month and year column here. Now we've got total sales for our month and year and just make sure this is sorted correctly. So we're starting in 2014 and we're going all the way to 2016. Now a requirement that you will have all the time is this, is this uh, calculate your total sales year to date or financial year to date because that's what we're going to focus on. So it's actually not too far removed from just doing a calculation year to date for the standard year to date. Now, obviously, first of all, you want your simple your measure, your your simple measure where we're just summing up a column. So we're in this case, we're summing up total revenue. But then we have to use the calculate statement to actually then go and calculate something cumulatively because calculate is the only thing that can change the context of our calculation and we need to change the context of this calculation to make this work so first of all we're going to create a new measure and we're going to call this we're going to call this sales in this case year today and i'm going to go calculate i'm going to place in my expression which is total sales that's just my initial core measure and then i'm going to find all i'm going to do here and this is a really good tip time and tell uh, the IntelliSense, sorry, is really, really good. So all I've got to do is go YTD, and it will give me the two options that I can select from, dates year to date and total year to date. In this case, I'm gonna go dates year to date. And then you'll see that I've got two input options here. First of all, I can just put in the dates column, which is in our dates table. And then I can close it off. And if I then drag this in, you'll see that we're actually getting sales year to date. So it starts off with 4.5 million and then accumulatively goes up, goes higher. And then we get to December, which is the last date, uh, last month of the year. And then we jump back down to uh, just the total for the first month and so on and so forth. So this is great. So obviously now we've got our sales year to date, but we actually want to, in this case, look at sales uh, financial year to date. And it's not, it's very, it's an easy, it's an easy move from where we are now. So all I want to do is I'm going to change this to sales financial year to date. And if I go comma here, if I go comma, you'll see that we have this year end date option. Now, if our, for our, our end month was the, um, uh, was June, all we need to input here is 30 the day and the year but you've got to make sure that it's actually recorded as text here so the exclamation marks are important not the exclamation marks sorry the um, the inverted the inverted commas are important and if we push enter you'll see that the time frame actually changes for these for the sales um, for this measure that we've created sales financial year to date and the very first month of the cumulative, cumulative totals that we are calculating is actually the seventh month, which is exactly what we want. Now, say it was, say March was our last day, we could actually go 30th of March, we probably actually want to go 31st of March in this case. And you'll see that March now becomes the very first month for our cumulative amounts to work. And so we could actually see how this works from a visual perspective. And I'll just take um, take the total sales out, turn this into an area chart. And you'll see that this visually, uh, we may need to adjust how we actually view this visually or adjust the visualization. But you see here that now we're getting this cumulative total that hits hits March, which is the last year, last month in our financial year. Then all of a sudden it goes back down to um, to the start or where just total sales for um, for April in that case. Now, if we moved in our date here, 
you'll see that again we'll get a, a different visual altogether and we'll get every single day we'll actually start from basically zero on the first day of the month and then we'll just gradually uh, gradually move higher and then all of a sudden we get to the end of that financial year and and start again so that's how you calculate uh, not only uh, cumulatively sales year to date but also sales financial year to date where you are able to input what month or which date you start your uh, new financial year hey everyone thanks for tuning in to enterprise dna tv if you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial please throw the video a like it really helps us and we really appreciate it also don't forget to subscribe to the enterprise dna tv channel uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use power bi and the power platform lastly check out enterprise dna's website plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily all the best take care